Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Dan has repeatedly told Victorians that even though most people infected with the coronavirus experience mild symptoms, that because it is a wildly infectious virus, uh, without uh, lockdowns, more vulnerable people would be infected, they would need to be hospitalised, overrunning our health system, and would lead to more deaths. Uh, Dan has also told uh, young Victorians that there can be lifelong negative health effects uh, for those who recover from the virus. Victoria has a total population of 6.8 million, but uh, only 20,000 of the state's residents have contracted the coronavirus. So rather listen to the hyperbole of Dan Andrews at his daily press conferences. Tonight, my featured guest is a person for whom COVID has entered his household. Uh, Gary Hume has been an active member of the Melbourne pa Patriot scene for many years, attending many of the United Patriots front and True Blue crew rallies when street political activism was lawful. He was also a member of the Milo Five group of Patriots who were charged by uh, Victoria Police uh, for a fray and various other uh, offences when they were attacked uh, by Antifa and socialist protesters outside the Milano Yiannopoulos Melbourne event in December 2017. Uh, Gary's daughter, who lives in the family home, contracted the coronavirus in her workplace. All of the people I know who've uh, contracted the coronavirus uh, during uh, Victoria's second wave have contracted it at work. Gary himself did not test positive, but as a close contact had to isolate and provide care for his daughter while uh, she recovered from the virus. Uh, Gary, welcome back to the show. Tim, very nice to be here. Nice to see you. Now, the last time I saw you in person was, well, when you last appeared on Wilms Front in our former studio uh, in December uh, 2019, just before oh. Christmas. We were celebrating the, the Brexit breakthrough. Uh, Boris Johnson won the, the, the Brexit uh, deadlock election, and we're all feeling quite optimistic about uh, what the, the 20s would bring. But, well, it's been a shocker so far. Uh, the beginning of the, the, the 20s and, well, uh, even though I'm getting to speak to you now, I don't know when I will be legally able to, to meet up with each other again. Yeah, sad times, Tim. It's certainly sad times. And it seems like, uh, well, that seems like a lifetime ago, to be honest with you. Who, who, who'd have thought, you know, just before Christmas, we were we were absolutely flying. And, you know, just a few short months later, it's like, um, it's actually turmoil. We are living... Um, you know, we're not we're not really living at the moment, are we? We're, we're just yeah, we're just in a hellhole. Oh, we are living, but uh, we're not living a you, quality you think of this life. This is this is not living. I don't classify this as living, really. I mean, Jesus being being cooped up. I I, I don't think so. No, I, I I wasn't disagreeing with you there. I was just mm. saying we are living, but uh, our quality of, of life sorts. at the moment is extremely yeah. poor. Uh, Daniel yeah. Andrews says, well, he's repeatedly said that. Uh, uh, the uh, the lockdowns are, are not about uh, human rights, it's about human life. And, well, I've repeatedly made the point, uh, what quality of, of human life? Well that's, that, well, that's exactly right. We're not having any um, quality of life. And uh, the problem is uh, with uh, Danny Boy, he's, he's going for the uh, eradication instead of... Um, you know, which we just can't eradicate it. But um, instead of living with it, we can live with it. But um, unfortunately, he's he's not taking an option. He's going for the for the you know, a, an option that just just isn't possible. It's just not possible. You're never going to eradicate it. Well, the the Western world has lived through the the pandemic since March this year. Even though the mm -hmm. virus well was first born, a, a first first confirmed case in Wuhan, China was a. Uh, December 19th, so it was actually mm. three three days before uh, our uh, pre-Christmas uh, interview, so we were mm. unaware of what uh, had been created, whether Absolutely. it was through that uh, wet market uh, bat soup or uh, that uh, what had leaked out of that uh, bioweapons uh, facility that it was going to change our lives uh, as, we, as we know it uh, the, the next year. We knew about the coronavirus, uh, the, the outbreak and the, the lockdown in Wuhan, China in January and February. Uh, 
Mm. Uh, but uh, we didn't think that... Well, it started, there, there were confirmed cases here, but we never anticipated that it, it, there was going to need to be these uh, national lockdowns. But in March, that's when the Western world acted in unison to, to lock down. And we saw the, uh, the hospital and grave scenes in uh, New York and, 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 and Italy and uh, Australia through its so newly created uh, a national cabinet took decisive action to uh, shut the sh shut the international borders, uh, which you and I had been calling for uh, stricter border control for uh, for many years. Isn't it ironic that uh, uh, the uh, progressives have learned to, to love borders so much in 2020? They love it. They absolutely love it. It's uh, it's quite remarkable, really. Like you said, um, um, we've always wanted. Um, um, you know, borders you can control, but um, close borders totally. You know, what person in the right mind would uh, want to close borders, you know, in their entirety? I mean, even uh, state borders. I mean, that's just absolutely obscene at the moment. I, um, I'm keen to know your initial thoughts on, because even late March, we still didn't know all that we know now about the, the virus. And uh, the deal was that we've got to flatten the curve so our health system uh wasn't overrun and because i didn't know everything about the virus because it was born in made in china and we know how secretive and how much they lied uh, mm. i was prepared to sort of accept that deal at the time but as soon as i think listen and i think everyone did tim that that's the thing it was new no one had it no one had a clue no one had an idea really what was going on um you know every every year we're you know, we're told about, you know, there's a new virus, this is going to kill us all, and, you know, it's going to be Armageddon. So, so they have this new thing come out of China. You know, I don't think people really took much of a, you know, much notice of it, to, to be honest with you. Oh, well, we've had so many viruses, potential, the, yeah. or actual declared pandemics uh, during the 21st century, was that uh, you're uh, older than me. Uh, so, you. so you'd uh, remember SARS of uh, 2002. Was that, I remember when I was at, uh, at, at uni in 2009, that's when uh, swine flu uh, had mm -hmm. arrived in, in Melbourne. And yeah, it was just something that was in the news. I wouldn't want to get it. But yeah, there was no thought. Of... No, no, one, no, one took, no, no one really takes any notice of it. You know, this is the first time in, well, this is the first time I've, I've ever known for this sort of thing to happen so what you know i've never really paid any attention to it yes we've had you know previous outbreaks of this that and the other but you just brush it off you just carry on with life uh, but uh, uh, for some well I, I think basically due to to fear of the unknown i think that's why the uh, australia uh reacted uh, so uh, with, with such drastic action in in late march and I remember we started, well, the, the curve was flatlining in late April, and I was of the view, okay, we flatten the curve now, let's, uh, 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 let's uh, get back to, to normal now. But uh, particularly uh, in our state of Victoria, where uh, uh, Chairman Dan, Dictator Dan, Despot uh, Dan, we were calling him Dictator Dan before it was cool. <laughs> I, I think, uh, as far as I know, we've been calling Dictator Dan from probably the second week in the job, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so, well, the, the entire the Patriot movement, because the, the trigger for the, the birth of the, the Patriot movement in early 2015 was the Link Cafe siege in, in Sydney mm. uh, yes, with that yes. uh, Man, Man Monas. Man Morris. Mm. Yeah. And uh, that's when Reclaim started the... Uh, the uh, early next year and that also coincided with uh, Dan Andrews uh, election uh, as premier and oh, we, we need to constantly remind everyone of uh, uh, Dan's uh, despicable actions over the years. The first thing he did uh, when he became premier was cancel the, the East West link. Uh, and, and, and how was, just refresh my memory Tim, how, I think that was how many billions about 1.2 billion yeah, at, le at, at least a billion not to build a road. Yeah, it's staggering. A road that's needed. It, you know, it's a road that is needed drastically. But um, I think the uh, inner city uh, hipsters and the uh, and the uh, and the greens who are strong in Melbourne just uh, yeah, no, they uh, they didn't didn't want to buy it. 
Uh, because you live up in the uh, the the northeast, which mm. I know that when I've ever ventured up that way, it. I dread the commute because you've got to go all Sorry. up these. these, these uh, uh, though Dan is, well, uh, it, it's in the starting soon. The the North East Link, which links is that, is, is actually started. They're doing a prep work. I drive past it every day. They're doing a prep work as we speak. To be honest, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has uh, uh, done things with removing the the level crossings. I'm not sure if you've noticed that up in your area. He, he he's uh, he's dominated at that. That's um that, that's definitely his forte is removal of level crossings. <laughs> yeah. Although the thing is about the the roads and and rail now, it's not like anyone can actually use them. No, no, the roads are great at the moment. That's probably the only good thing to come out of all this. You can get from A to B uh, quite quickly. Uh, it's nice. <laughs> as long as you're out for a, for a lawful reason, because oh, oh and, and you're not going any more than five k's down the road, obviously. Yeah, mm, unless it's for uh, work or or, or giving yeah. care. Who, who, who would have thought you needed a permit to go to work? Yeah, yeah per, per, permit. permitted worker. Uh, yeah, who, who, who'd have thought that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. It was funny. I, I went up to, uh, I think it was on the, um, well, right about June. Um, I had to go up to uh, Bacchus Marsh, which was uh, in a different, um, you needed to go through a border control there. And uh, uh, I didn't actually need a uh, permit then, but I had to show my, my driver's license and they just inquired what you're doing up there. I was actually going up there to do some work. Um, and it was quite, it's quite surreal actually, just going, you know, 50 k's up the road and you stopped at a roadblock and you're, you know, you're questioning what, what you're doing. And it was in the, it would have been about June, July time because um, that's when cafes closed down. You couldn't have any, uh, you couldn't eat in here. Um, but you could have, um, you, you could eat in, in any country cafe. So yeah, so it, it's really different. Uh, now going back to, to Dan's, uh, infrastructure, uh, mm. blitz, which I, I think was the, the main factor about why he won that, that landslide re-election in, 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 in 2018. Uh, but, uh, you and I both know, and so did uh, many, many others that the chickens would come home to, to roost because. Uh, it's been well. It's been well repeated now uh, that uh, most normies are waking up that Dan Andrews has never run uh, a business and has no idea how how business yeah. works. No. And no. all of the the infrastructure that he's built, it's all been uh, overpriced. Uh, there was just in the news yesterday about the how it's going to cost oh, hundreds of millions to get rid of that toxic soil with the the, mm. the Westgate mm. Westgate. Uh, tunnel. So yes, things are being built, uh, but uh, severely uh, overpriced. And we know how he and uh, his union buddies are, are like that. So they get all their uh, sweet deals as well. And the, the state's finances were not looking well going into this pandemic. Mm. Uh, and obviously, with the the, the amount of uh, revenue uh, that the state uh, would be losing, and every time Dan makes a, a funding announcement, whether it be a, a payment for a, getting a test or uh, isolating or it's for, for mental health or small business arts and community grants, that's money that the state doesn't have. Well, no, it doesn't have. I mean, um, before this actually all happened, I think Victoria were, was in debt to a huge amount of money. Then it was something like about $80 billion, and that was... Uh, before the pandemic actually started mm. since since then I, I just you know i hate to imagine i mean where's the money coming from who's funding this it's, well it's quite staggering there's been a lot of speculation about uh, where the, the, the money is is, is 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 coming from uh that a lot mm. of it's uh, borrowed from uh people's republic of of china which is mm. And mm. it's been often uh, joked that uh, this is the People's Republic of Victoria, where basically not much different. It, it's it's no longer a meme. No, no, I, and I think it's quite true. But what what is uh, quite good now is uh, people have actually woken up to this. It's it's been reported on the uh, you know even on the mainstream media now, and uh, even even the uh, Belt and Road project where we were onto that maybe two years ago. It's um, um, now people have actually woken up to that. Uh, you know, even uh, Morrison is trying to uh, put something forward to uh, you know to be able to stop that. You know, federally, which is uh, which is a great move. Yeah. 
Hey, and Dan, uh, when he learnt about that, was not happy. I'm not sure if you're no, he wasn't. That day. No, 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 no. He, 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 you know, he's a, he, he just throws a bit of a hissy fit, really, and he just, um, you know, he, he, he's not a pleasant person, is he? Let's be honest. No. Uh, well, we both, we both knew that. Uh, we're, we're sort of doing uh, a lot of. Uh, we we all knew this about uh, Dan and his government already, but uh, it's well, the the silver lining in this horrid year in Victoria is that uh, so many others have, 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 have woken up because, well, he's turfed a lot of people out of their, their, their jobs, uh, shut down their businesses, separated them from friends and family, uh, mm. limited mm. Uh, their, 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 their movements, daily, daily movements uh, outside the, uh, the home, uh, forced people to, 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 to wear masks. And so a lot of people are... Uh, Actually, I don't... I don't um, can I just say, I don't wear, mind wearing my mask. It's... Uh, yeah, I quite often wear this out. It's... Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's... Um, yeah, yeah, it's a pleasure to wear this. It's uh, Dan Andrews, uh, for yeah. those who are listening on audio. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you uh, mind wearing this. <laughs> yeah, because as long as it covers uh, your nose and your mouth, it can have whatever... Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you I, pop, I popped down. The, it's it's quite new actually. I, I got this. A good friend of mine got this for me last week, and uh, I popped down to the supermarket. And uh, yeah, I uh, I got some looks, but um, I got some uh, people saying, "Oh, oh nice, yeah." You know, there's, there's a lot of people up in arms about what's going on, and pe- I think people have had a guts full of Dan Andrews, and it's quite remarkable with uh, the latest polling. I've no idea where they're getting those numbers from. Yes, well, uh, the polls that have been, it's mainly uh, mm. Roy Morgan polling, mm. that's been the most consistent one. Mm. There was also a news poll uh, and a central media poll, but they're polling based on uh, the, the public's reaction to Dan Andrews's handling of the, the pandemic, which is different Stop, from Stockholm, vote, uh, vote, the Stockholm voting, uh, syndrome, voting. I think. Yeah. It's the Mel- Melbourne syndrome now, I think it was. Yeah, Johannes, it's definitely the Melbourne. Yeah. Johannes Lee, yeah. who, uh, yeah. who did that. Uh, he's, he's had some cracking uh, cartoons about uh, Victoria. Mm. Uh, mm. We've got a super chat here on, on Entropy. Uh, a reminder to, to everyone, if you want to ask uh, me and uh, Gary a question or send through a super chat, uh, please click on the Entropy link uh, in the, the YouTube live chat uh, or the DLive live chat. Uh, it's from uh, your, 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 your Milo5 uh, uh, co well, I wouldn't, or you're not co-accused anymore, but... Uh, uh, Comrade? No, that's not the right right no, term. No, he's definitely not a comrade. <laughs> yeah, uh, brother, associate, bro- brother, As- brother. Yeah, that's that. That's the word. Gaza has always been in the thick of it, protected and stood strong with Ricky T on Australia Day 2019, and stood with me on Australia Day. He total Chad. Mark is Gary's biggest fag turn. Yeah, Margot Huss, uh, my 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 moderator. She apparently likes <laughs> you as well. Very nice. But yeah, uh, Australia Day. Uh, yeah, 2019, you're with, uh, yeah, Ricky T when uh, he almost got uh, lynched yeah, just lynched. for standing with his No, family. no, 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 he didn't, not, not almost, he did get lynched. <laughs> he really did. I, <laughs> he got dragged down the street. That mm. was a lynching if ever there was one. Yeah. yeah. And you're also uh, there in, in 2020. Were you with Neil at the time when he was... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, myself and Ericsson, we, we stood there. Uh, we yeah. stood there proudly. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah uh, actually before... We had the chance to do anything. The police, uh, uh, yeah, the police arrested Ericsson because he was stood there, hmm. minding his own business on Australia Day. Wasn't doing anything, just stood on the steps outside of Blinder Street. You, you, you just can't make that shit up. Hmm. You really can't. Although, if you go back and, and watch uh, uh, Neil's video of his, well, he wasn't arrested, he was uh, detained. That's the detained. official detained. wording. Uh, based on uh, uh, September 2020 uh, uh, Victoria Police uh, uh, conduct, they were actually uh, very, 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 very uh, tame uh, with how they, they removed him. They just gently dragged him away. It was, it was, mm. uh, it was very. They they, they 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 were very gentle with him. Yeah, I think uh, the thing is with Ericsson, he he's been profiled within an inch of his life. He he really has. It's quite funny. I know um, it's different. It's the same story, different walks of different people. But I remember uh, 
eight years ago, possibly, the Flemington Sudanese community. They, uh, they, they actually sued Victoria Police for, for profiling. I can't understand why Ericsson hasn't sued him for the same, uh, for the same outcome. Well, he hasn't got uh, a lot of uh, legal centres uh, behind him. No, no. Yeah. Well, that that that's right. I mean, but I mean, he, I've been with him many times when he's just been arrested, well, detained, shall we say, just for standing there, doing nothing, standing there, possibly with a flag, hmm. walking down the street. It's uh, it's actually, people don't realise this. You've got to see it to believe it. You're walking down the street. And you get detained for no other reason. Oh, it's a breach of the peace. That's the... Yeah. Uh, Walking down the street and it's a breach of the peace. Yeah. Oh, staggering. Which is basically because uh, Neil's uh, presence... Who he is. Uh, it's yeah, who he is. Triggers uh, the various lefties. Yeah, it does. It, it does indeed, but it's still profiling. He, he has been profiled for years just because of who he is. Uh, so that was, well, uh, uh, January 2020 when, what is it, uh, uh, things were, were still normal. Well, normal, normal, as normal as you can get in Victoria. Mm. Well, in Melbourne. Yes, yeah, so we went to the, uh, the, the, the stage three uh, stay at home uh, restrictions in, in late March. Uh, that, mm. uh, that was well, the, the, the four reasons to, to, to leave, the, leave the house, uh, which were either uh, essential shopping, work, uh, exercise, uh, giving care or receiving uh, care. There were no masks, uh, mask, uh, face covering mandates, uh, uh, at that time, mm. uh, but you ha also have to remember at that time that uh, there was very little uh, community transmission. It was all it was very low over overseas uh, travelers, and mm. that the people who were a, a contracting the coronavirus locally, they'd been with a, a, a their, their close. It was normally a close contact who had been uh, over overseas. overseas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was very easy at that time for all our states and territories to eliminate the virus just by uh, shutting the, the international uh, borders. Uh, but mm. this is when we, uh, since the, the beginning of that uh, first uh, stage three lockdown, we, we, Victorians got a glimpse of the full dictator Dan in, in full flight, uh, using the, the big stick uh, enforcement uh, uh, approach with the the uh, the, the threats of uh, the, the the fines, which fines, are extremely e extremely high. The the sixteen hundred and fifty two uh, dollar fine for for breaching the chief health officer's uh, directives. So now we know that a lot of these directives they weren't actually recommended by the chief health officer. He well, they they're called his directives, but. Uh, as we know, the curfew wasn't one of his recommendations. So uh, it, that that comes straight from Dan. Yeah, uh, you know that comes straight from Dan. Not 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 even the uh, Vic Pohl uh, owned up to that one. Yeah, uh, I, I I I don't call them uh, captains' calls. I call them uh, dictatorial decrees. Mm. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. But that yeah, that's uh, that's when his uh, hectoring lecturing began. It's like if you don't uh, uh, comply with this, you'll be punished, and you could kill uh, your your grandmother uh, or a mate. The the really a, a really a draconian a big stick uh, approach. And I think, uh, but I think he uh, I think he gets a lot of a, a bit of a kick out of that. He seems to enjoy it. That's when he's uh, seems to be at his happiest. You know, he he loves that. You know, iron fist. He he really does. Total total rule. I think it is. Mm. Yeah, and uh, Victoria uh, issued the the most fines, uh, banned the most things. Remember, we were there during the first lockdown, the only state to ban uh, golf and fishing, uh, even though it's there, there's don't, still... for, don't forget learner drivers. Don't forget learner drivers. Oh yes. Uh, uh, because well, that was that that fine was uh, rescinded uh, basically because they had made clear that doing Public that backlash. was wrong. Yeah, yeah. And uh, don't forget some of the other fines that were rescinded. A a, a tradie uh, washing his car at a, a self service car wash at two a.m. in the morning. 
because that was the only free time he could get to wash his car, even though he was yeah. washing his car. It was a self-serve car wash at 2 in the morning. The only people yeah. within his vicinity were the police who find him, which was withdrawn. Yeah, they, I, I know the first time around, there was a lot of um, yeah, fines. They were rescinded. Um, there was a bit of discretion going on there then, but there's the certainly... Uh, not now. It's uh, it's it's uh, very hard. It's, it's, it, you, you, there's no fines being rescinded now. Yeah, so we had the uh, Victoria issued the the most fines, banned the most uh, things, and uh, was also the the slowest to emerge from lockdown because it was uh, May the ninth when uh, Scott Morrison launched the three step framework to a COVID safe Australia. And that was two days before Mother's Day. And Dan Andrews was like, nothing changes today. The state of emergency mm. expires on Monday. That's when I'll uh, announce what the what the changes are. And Victoria Police will be uh, enforcing the, the current rules on the on the weekend. Basically, if you try to visit your mother on Mother's Day. Uh, yeah, he, he, he likes having the he likes having the final word. That's for sure. It, it's, it's all about him, his rules, not Morrison's. It's about you know, Andrews, it's his rules. It's all about him. Mm. Even when he speaks, he never, you know, he never says, you know, collectively us as a government or us or we, it's always I, 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 all the time. Yeah. And then when he uh, did uh, announce on the, on the Monday, the oh, slight uh, relaxation of the, the first stage three lockdown, uh, you're you're allowed private gatherings of five in the home and ten outside, but uh, cafes and restaurants and pubs couldn't uh, reopen yet because he decided that it wasn't feasible for pubs to to reopen with limits than uh, li uh, uh, limits of ten. Uh, it didn't matter what the in individual business thought; he just decided that himself. Yeah, I mean that was just uh, quite incredible, really. Yeah. You, uh, you 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 got to feel sorry for the pubs, and I mean because I don't think uh, COVID's ever been um, passed on in a in a bar, as far as I know. Uh, not at a golf course, or not at a hairdresser's. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Yeah, yeah How, not... how's your hair looking? How's your hair looking, Tim? Oh, you can see it. It's it's getting quite wild. <laughs> hmm. Luckily, uh, uh, my daughter gave me a haircut the other day, so it's all good. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, Dan uh, eventually confessed that yes, he did. His wife did give him a a, 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 a light trim. He initially denied that he'd had a had a had a trim. Uh, he said it definitely wasn't a a, a black market haircut. Yeah, right here. Um, my, uh, I, I want to know Brett Sutton. The guy is uh, he's very tanned all the time, isn't he? You ever noticed that? Yes. Well. Not much is actually known about him. He could have some uh, uh, olive uh, blood in him. He's very brown, but um, yeah, yeah, he, he he certainly loves being in front of the TV. Yeah, although I do much prefer his uh, demeanor to 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 Dan's. Uh, Brett is, is oh, much more. He's, he's happy. Pleasant. He's happy. He's happy. Uh, I still don't know whether he is. Like, as bad as Dan, because as we know, uh, as, as we're beginning to learn, a lot of these decisions uh, are, are not ones that are based on his recommendations, just what uh, Dan decides. You, you wonder if he's just, he's, he's in sort he, of a he's, hostage he's just situation. A, he's just a person. He's just a person that's been stuck in front of the, uh, front of the camera, I, mm. I believe, personally. Well, I don't, don't mean he's got much clout. Yeah, we don't see him uh, every day. Uh, we see the... no. He's, he's actually disappeared uh, uh, of late. Mm. He, he's, he's certainly not on as often. Yeah. Uh, we we see the the, well, the new deputy uh, chief health officer Alan Chang uh, quite regularly now. Yeah. because uh, yeah. they moved on. Uh, uh, Annal Annalise Van Diemen. Van Diemen, yeah, I, I, and so they should do. I mean, uh, what what did she say? Yeah, she compared um, COVID to. Uh, you know the invasion by Captain Cook. I mean, Jesus! What you could all see what her political um, agenda was straight away there. My yeah, because the, uh, the she was making the analogy that are oh, just like the the Brits brought diseases which infected mm. the Aboriginal yeah. population. The uh, the Chinese have imported a a foreign <laughs> virus. But uh, the way I interpret it, she was actually uh, talking about the. Uh, the, the Chinese being foreigners, they're bringing a virus. So she was, she was <laughs> she, actually... She, 
<laughs> she could have been. She was bagging the Chinese, yeah. Well, mm. well, well we can roll with that. Yeah. yeah, I remember Dan defended her at the at, at the time, saying, "Oh, the tweet was made on a, on a on a day off," and I was like, "A day off during the middle of a pandemic." Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm. but as we know now, they didn't seem to be doing much uh, to uh, basically. Well, we've been told all along that the official national cabinet policy is to suppress uh, the virus, though definitely in Victoria, uh, steps weren't taken during the, the flatten the curve period to have uh, systems in place to make sure that if there was an outbreak, uh, the virus could be uh, suppressed and outbreaks uh, contained. So mm. obviously, well, yeah, you, you understand. They, 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 they... They failed. They certainly failed on the uh, tracing, uh, um, you know, COVID tracing. Um, that's for sure. I mean, you, you look at other states, certainly at New South Wales, and they've, uh, um, they've smashed it. They've dominated. And they have, you know, they're up and running still. You can go down a pub and have a beer and a meal and yeah. go to the sport. They don't have to, to, uh, to wear a mask. Uh, life is, is pretty much to, normal. You can't yeah, have... I mean, it's, 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 it's almost normal. It's probably as, you know as normal as you can possibly get at the moment. Yeah. You can't have a wild party or a wild wedding, though. That's there. Um, but and but you also can't hold a, a large demonstration in Sydney as well, which, to be fair to New South Wales police, they have at least applied equally. I mean, they've shut down... All they the, did. The Black Absolutely. Lives Matter rallies, yeah. and they also shut down the, the Sydney uh, Freedom Day march in, in Hyde Mark. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They, they certainly didn't uh, get stopped in uh, Victoria. Um, there was no pushback at all. The police didn't come out uh, with a ring of steel. They they didn't come out on horseback to just uh, you know arrest everyone. It was um, quite remarkable, really. But, but we we live in Victoria. It's a um, state of uh, double standards, as, yeah. uh, as we know. It's yeah. been uh, heaps of a. Uh, just uh, citizen uh, YouTubers have clipped together. Uh, Luke Cornelius, uh, the yeah. uh, assistant commissioner, uh, Chief Wiggum, uh, as he's popularly known, uh, uh, cutting up his uh, statements about uh, facilitating the Black Lives Matter rallies, yet uh, the selfish uh, tinfoil hat, uh, batshit crazy anti lockdown no. protesters. That, that, that Cornelius, he, um, I mean, uh, we've. Uh... We've been honoured enough to give us, uh, you know, an hour's exercise a day. That guy doesn't look as if he takes it, does it? No. Uh, <laughs> we haven't heard from him the uh, last couple of weeks. We've heard from uh, he's, other... He's another one that's vanished. Mm. We, 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 we've heard from other uh, deputy uh, commissioners, such as uh, uh, Rick Nugent and uh, uh, Neil Patterson. Yeah, I think uh, that Patterson, he's, he's um, a bit more war. And obviously, he's, yeah, it look, looks, looks a bit trimmer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's definitely uh, got a bit more bounce to him, a bit, mm. bit fitter, shall we say. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, pubs, uh, cafes and restaurants were uh, finally allowed to, to reopen in, in late May. Uh, uh, I think gyms, gyms opened about the same time, if memory no, serves me. No, no, they had to wait until further. Well, it was when Dan, he... It wasn't, it wasn't too long after that, because I went back to the gym and it was only probably... Well, maybe it was a little bit afterwards, because I think gyms only stayed open for about two weeks and they got closed yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, that was when uh, the curve was, was pretty flat uh, in mm. uh, Victoria. And, but that's also the same time when uh, the, the second wave uh, is, uh, started to, to leak out of uh, the Ridges Hotel on Swanson Street. 99% yeah. of second wave cases have been uh, genomically back to that, uh, yeah. uh, uh, traced uh, back to that uh, hotel. I, I just sort of wonder with that, with that hotel now, what's going to be the future of it given that it's notoriety now i don't think uh i'd be fancy uh going there for, for a romantic night tim that's for sure no no i think <laughs> because ridges is an international uh hotel yeah, change they, they, they yeah, probably might change. just shut it down and just move it somewhere else just yeah just do away with it i don't think there's uh, any coming back from that to be honest mm. with you uh they 
even though we now know that's where the second wave uh, uh, began, uh, when the, the cases started to rise in, in mid-June, uh, Dan blamed uh, families getting together. Family and, gatherings. Yeah, and uh, Victorians mm -hmm. being too uh, complacent. Uh, being blasé, that's right, not doing the right thing. He blamed everyone. He pretty much blamed everyone apart from putting his hand up and saying, listen, we've made a stuff up here. No, yeah. Dan does uh, not pray like that. And when yeah. he uh, started to uh, delay uh, the further relaxation of uh, uh, restrictions, uh, you, you have to remember, and uh, I noticed that uh, uh, Boris Johnson is now following the, 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 the Dan Andrews model with the, the softening up for the second lockdown. First, it's yeah. the, uh, the suspension of the relaxation. Then it's the localised lockdowns. Remember, we had the, mm. Uh, mm. the, the 10 postcode... Uh, lockdown and uh, that was on a, a Thursday then on the uh, uh, that was Thursday the 2nd of July and then on Saturday 4th of July that's when the the nine public housing towers went in to that into lockdown the yeah. level five Wuhan lockdown mm. that, 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 yeah. I, that I call it yeah. and then yeah. it was a uh, the Thursday after that, when all of Metro Melbourne went into uh, another stage three, six week lockdown, we were told at the, at the time, which was scheduled to end mm. on August the 16th, which is a long, long time ago. Seems like a distant memory now, didn't it? Mm, yeah. But I remember at the time, Dan was like, uh, if, you know, if, if, if Victorians don't behave, you know, I'll be locking down all the postcodes. I'll be doing this. I'll be doing that. Yeah. I mean, and that's when he, uh, he revels in that sort of like um, ability to, you know, wave a stick and, you know, chastise people. It's it's just Dan Andrews all over, really, isn't it? Yeah, which is why I can't watch his daily press briefings anymore. It's the same, 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 day in, day out. Absolute dribble. It really is. Because we are basically living our lives on what he announces are the daily case numbers and the hospitalizations mm -hmm. and the recoveries and that. I never in uh, recent Western history has our lives depended on, upon about what the leader says uh, no. on, a, on a daily basis, what the, what the dictator no. decrees. No. The guy's got too much power. That's, that's the long and short of it, mm. isn't it, to be honest. I mean, right. And he's been, he's been given it as well. I mean, you know, when they voted for, you know, extending his powers, was it the Greens and Fiona Patton? And, uh, yeah. Andy Medicare. The Animal Justice Party, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that uh, uh, Bernie Finn, uh, maverick liberal MLC, calls uh, Fiona Patton leader of the treason party now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. She, uh, do you know what? I listened to her on, I think it was Neil Mitchell one morning, and uh, and she she really talked it up. She, I thought she's on side. She's not going to vote for that. She said she wasn't going to vote for it, but, um, yeah, she... she uh, She's, uh, she just rolled over in the end and, and she went. Oh, and she, and she said she wouldn't vote for the 12 month uh, universal. Mm. Uh, six six months, I think. Six months. I mean, six months. Oh my God, that's a long time. Mm. And now she's sad because there's the, the omnibus uh, emergency measures uh, bill uh, before the, the, the parliament, which would allow uh, Dan, oh, uh, probably Dan Andrews, but it's. Uh, we know that he makes the decisions, but it uh, it allows the state government to appoint anyone, an authorised officer, to detain anyone for an indefinite period of time if there's a belief that they won't You could comply. spread it. Shame they didn't go into the uh, Afghan cluster and uh, um, bang all those up, isn't it, really? I, I think in that uh, one instance, Dan Andrews uh, discovered that... Uh, uh, people aren't going to, to come forward to with information if they're constantly threatened. Oh my goodness! Is that not the, that goes for every Victorian, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But he 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 only <laughs> learns in that one circumstance that yeah, the well, big stick yeah. uh, threatening approach doesn't work. Yeah, quite quite amazing that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, because he said that uh, contact tracing information is worth way more than sixteen hundred and fifty two dollar fines. Mm. Yeah, just, just, yeah. Oh, I don't know what to say about that, to be honest with you. I think oh, it's, it's just the shit. continuing uh, yeah. double, double standards. Because... Double standards. It's, it's, just, that's, it's, it's just bullshit. It's, it's just different rules for different people. And it's, it's always been like, 
like that in Melbourne ever since he's uh, you know been elected. Unfortunately, and now uh, with his new roadmap out of lockdown, outdoor activity is encouraged, uh, mm. even though well. We're allowed two hours outside at the moment for exercise. Until nine o'clock as well, though. We can stay yeah, yeah. until nine o'clock, Tim. How good is that? Yeah. yeah, so you only just discovered recently that uh, yeah. the virus is less transmissible outdoors. That's right. It hides in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite remarkable. Yeah. And, th- and this is the thing. The It's so obvious that it's just been... Uh, it's all governments australian governments have been making it up as they go along these restrictions yeah and and what is good to see at the moment you're seeing a lot of um uh doctors and you know professors and people who are actually speaking up about it now saying this is not the way to go it's it's more and more academics are actually speaking up about it as well not not just uh, the man on the street but academics and you know health health professionals and professors they're, they they're calling them out because it's um it's just not working. Uh, Charlie Brown uh, AU on Entropy has asked, why don't the pro-freedom right-wing Christians just pack up and leave diversity in infected cities en masse? Well, we can't leave uh, at, the, at, the, at the moment. Uh, where... I, can only, we can only, I can only go 5Ks down the road. Uh, Melbourne is the new East Berlin. That's right, my word, uh, isn't it? Checkpoint Charlie's uh, all around Melbourne. Yeah. They're apparently, yeah. the Checkpoint Charlies, uh, they, they don't operate when it rains. I've actually um, got a tunnel. I'm digging a tunnel in my garden at the moment, Tim. So um, I'm sort of like at the 2K mark. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, as, I, as I've said previously, the difference, about, uh, the difference between Melbourne and East Berlin is when the East Berliners fled to the West, they were welcomed, where none of the rest of Australia wants any Melburnians. Where they're, no, they're, just they're the leper colony here. They, uh, they've believed all the hype, yeah, we're, we're just unclean and, yeah, not very nice people. Super spreaders. Uh, I just wonder, uh, the, uh, the people in other states have still got Victorian uh, licences and registration plates. You wonder if there's, there's, there's calls going to their, like, snitch line saying, I just noticed a Victorian car in the car park, can you look into it? Yeah, I, I, I dare say that's going on, isn't it? Surely it must be. It must be. I haven't heard... It's sad, but it must yeah, be going on. Yeah, I haven't heard uh, of any, any first-hand information from it, but it's just sort of something that you sort of think might happen. Yeah, I, I, I dare say it's happening, without a shadow of a doubt. Mm. There's some uh, uh, people out there just uh, are scared, I think. That's what it is. They're really scared. Mm. They've believed all the hype. Now, despite the fact that uh, Dan Andrews blamed uh, families uh, getting together for uh, spreading the virus and contributing to the, the, the second wave, isn't it? Uh, it's quite typical of, 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 of communists to disparage uh, uh, families. Yeah, it is. Yeah, mm. absolutely it is, Tim. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the reason why the, 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 the second wave uh, uh, daily cases grew so uh, exponentially uh, was because of of workplace uh, transmissions uh, uh, essential uh, workplaces or as they're called now permitted workplaces because uh, under stage four now uh, you can only work if you're a permitted worker operate if you're a permitted workplace and uh, that is where the uh, the virus uh, was being uh, spread uh, in distribution, warehouses, uh, uh, abattoirs, and uh, of course, uh, the most catastrophic was uh, in in aged care facilities with staff, uh, infected staff, bringing the the virus in. And we mm. learnt that uh, at the at the same time when we were all uh, legally forced to wear masks, that was at the same time when aged care facilities were forced to wear PPE. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, um, they, they certainly didn't look after the uh, um, elderly in the in the care homes. That's for sure. I mean, that's yeah. uh, quite horrendous. Um, I know. Oh, you know, if, in a workplace, if if you um, are deemed to have caused a death, you know, it, it's punishable by you know prison. Well, what Andrews has done, his failures, has uh, has caused the same you know result in the end, and not just. A little result. It's it's up to nearly all, almost eight hundred people. Well, somebody's 
Somebody needs to be accountable for that. At the moment, they're all ducking for cover, obviously. They've all got amnesia in this, um, you know, and this hearing is going on at the moment. No one's admitting to anything. It's, um, it's actually quite perverse, to be honest with yeah. you. And, and it's correctly described as the Sergeant Schultz inquiry. They all get up and say, <laughs> I know nothing about how that decision yeah. was made. Amnesia. It's, it's just in quite, quite incredible. No one knows anything. They can't remember. Can't yeah. remember. I mean, yeah. far out. Um, um, <laughs> I think um, I think uh, I, I only heard briefly on the news that um, uh, they dug up some emails and some letters sent from uh, uh, Morrison to Andrews, insisting that he uses the uh, ADF. Yeah, this was so, during um, the, the second wave because yeah, yeah, they... yeah, yeah, Bef yeah. Before no, before that, I think it was. So it's um, yeah. Oh, I only heard the uh, uh, the tail end of it. So uh, yeah, there's 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 lots of, lots of ammunition to uh, um, you know string down Andrews up really, but. Um, We'll see what happens. He, he oh, but, but that's all just a, a right-wing uh, Murdoch uh, hit job conspiracy. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I stand with Dan. Thanks, Dan. Dan for PM. Oh, yeah. Teflon Dan. Teflon Dan. <laughs> he, he, you know, some of the stuff that he's got up to over the years, even the, uh, uh, the, the bloody red shirt, you know, walk that went on. It's, it's, it's like just didn't want to get involved in that. He walked away from that nice and clean. Mm. Uh, the New South Wales uh, Premier in 2014, Barry O'Farrell, uh, resigned over a bottle of wine that uh, he couldn't remember rece receiving when he was testifying before ICAC. That's, that's amazing, yeah. He resigned over a bottle of wine. Dan Andrews has led a, a failed government. It's, you know, resulted in 200, uh, sorry, 800 elderly dying. Oh, and, and but that's not including the, uh, the, the mental health uh death toll oh, as well uh, i just the decimation of the economy as well i just hate to imagine what that's going to you know mm. and up. that will have a much more longer lasting effect on the city of melbourne than the coronavirus mm. it, it's uh, interesting i went into i uh, went into the city a couple of days ago and you see all these uh, uh the, the, the coffee shops that are closed down all these uh, hipster coffee shops up in brunswick and uh <laughs> You know, Dan, you know, they're Dan Andrews, uh, uh, big supporters. So mm. it'd be interesting to see uh, what their take is on it. Yeah, it's been incredible, these uh, I Stand With Dan cultists. They mm. just defend every, it, it, not just everything he does, but a, a, everything that his enforcers do, even though uh, the enforcers later admit that uh, they, they got it wrong. Like, for example, I even saw I stand with Dan Coltis defending uh, uh, that Victoria police officer uh, kicking that uh, mentally ill man oh. in the head, even oh though goodness, yeah. Victoria police said he'd been stood down and they're referring it and the car hitting to uh, IBAC, the broad-based anti-corruption. If, 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 if I did anything like that at work, if I did whatever, I, I would be sacked on the spot, not on mm. full pay. Hmm. I would be sacked. You can't just stomp on somebody's head. Hmm. And But remember, these were the same people three months ago who were demanding Victoria Police uh, be defunded. Now they're defending yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Victoria Police, uh, arresting uh, the, all these uh, anti-lockdown protesters, charging the organisers with incitement. They can't get enough of uh, uh, Victoria Police, uh, a, a strong... Uh, strong arm action. Yeah, they um, th these bloody um, clowns, th these lefties, they, they don't know what they want. They change. They change every bloody day. They got no real uh, take on uh, reality, to be honest with you. Mm. Uh, Absolute it's, morons. Yeah, they uh, they must stop and think. Well, uh, you you think that they must stop. Just, and think. I don't think they do think. That's the mm. problem, though, Tim. They don't think. They they're just clueless. And uh, now they're claiming that, oh, see, uh, Dan Andrews' strategy uh, works. Uh, it's like... He, of course oh, it does. <laughs> if you're locking somebody up 23 hours a day, you, you are going to have less cases. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Even but don't though, worry about, you know, everyone else suffering. Yeah, even though Victoria is the only state that had a second wave. Yeah, there's, there's a reason why, yeah, they had a second wave. Yeah, Dan Andrews failed. Yeah, mm. like, yeah big time. Yeah, and it's like it's it's ba it's basically it's like I I, I did a good job uh, uh, repairing uh, all the, the the mess that I caused. Yeah, yeah. Apart from the economy, and yeah, people's mental health. 
Uh, now let's talk about uh, when COVID entered your uh, household. Uh, your uh, uh, daughter, mm. uh, she had a, a, a positive uh, test. Uh, she contracted yeah. it from her workplace. Uh, what yeah. was the lead up to when like, her having a coronavirus test? Did she have symptoms? No, no. She um, she just she just had to have a test. Uh, just just a protocol at work and um that was on the saturday or the sunday i think um and then i had the phone call when i was at work on the monday mid-morning she was uh, she was in tears saying that she tested positive to uh, covid um <laughs> it's quite funny actually i was uh, i was at work somewhere i won't say where and uh, the couple of uh, chicks that are working on you know in in reception um <laughs> They, they, they sort of like moved away and, and sort of like went into a different room and said that oh, you got to leave, you got to leave. Anyway, obviously I left and mm. I had a phone call from the infectious uh, disease mob and I had to go and get tested and go go straight home. Yeah, but um, she was uh, she was fine. She was absolutely fine. She had no real symptoms. She had um, probably a bit of an upset stomach, but that was pretty much it really um yeah i think uh, mentally it was torture because she had to be uh, locked away in a bedroom for 14 days uh, we had to be locked away in a house for 14 days um not being allowed to to leave um that was um, that was torture um you'd get a knock on the door every other day from uh, the dhhs and the um army which was uh, that was okay it was somebody to talk to but uh, yeah it was uh, it was challenging uh, so, I mean, uh, explain sort of how uh, it worked because uh, you you yourself test, uh, tested uh, negative, but obviously yeah. having a positive case in the in the the, the household. So, like, how uh, I, I'm just interested in logistics of like how so, did you yeah, bring so did you bring her food? How like um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. So, so she she basically she had to live in her bedroom. She wasn't allowed really to leave the bedroom. Luckily, she's got a bathroom in there and everything. So dinner times, we would have to knock on the door, you know, with a tray and you know run away. She'd come out, grab a you know grab a dinner and then you know so on and so forth. But mm. um, it was it was quite remarkable because. Um, I would have put all the money in the world that I had COVID just for the fact that living in a family unit, you know, you, you sort of give your daughter a hug every night and you, mm. you know, you wrestle and you drink out the same glasses, you know, just sort of family stuff. So something as contagious as that, I didn't actually catch it, nor did my wife. So it was, um, that was, um, that was a shock to us both. Because we both said, you know, how, how are we not caught this? Anyway, she got tested again, and she, yeah, she definitely had it. Um, and we got tested day eleven again, and we still didn't have it. And then, um, yeah, after fourteen days, I think day fifteen, we, we were allowed to leave. But um, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, how long did it take for the results to to get get back? Um, well, her results were sort of like you know thirty six hours. I think mine was about the same thirty six hours. Yeah. Yeah, roughly, just over a day, 36 hours. And you get, um, well, what happens is um, you get a text message saying, uh, you you know, positive or negative. Anyway, we've got one saying we were um, obviously negative. And then every day you get a, 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 an email, uh, sorry, a text message saying you you, you have to self-isolate, not leave, allowed to leave your home. If you do, you get a $1,600 fine. And then you just answer questions on your health. Are you feeling okay? Was that at the are time you... when it, because uh, they increased the, the penalty for, for breach? Yeah, they did. Well, originally, if you were uh, COVID positive, originally you were allowed to go out for a walk. You were yeah. allowed to get a shop. Somewhere. You were allowed to go, you know, do exercise, you know, oh. go for a jog or, or whatever. But they uh, but they stopped that a few weeks or a week or so before, you know, before we got it in our family. Um, so we were not allowed to leave. Yeah, you go out in the garden, but that was the uh, that was the limitations. I actually uh, ran up and down my driveway every day. I used to I used to do ten k's almost up and down my driveway every day. Yeah, yeah the 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 most exciting outing uh, you could get at the time. P- people were walking past, thinking, "Oh my god, what is this clown doing?" I was literally just pacing and jogging up and down the driveway. Uh, it was yeah, like I say, it was pretty cool when the um, <laughs> The HSS or the army would knock on your door to make sure you're quarantined because it would just give you somebody to talk to. <laughs> that's, that's how good life was. Exciting. Yeah. And 
uh, obviously uh, you would have seen the oh, the, the contact tracing uh, uh, firsthand. Uh, so obviously you mentioned you were at work when you got the call that your daughter had tested positive. Mm. Did people at mm. your work have to get tested? Were they contacted by DHS? No, because at the time I wasn't positive. They only they only follow up on that if you are positive. I was I wasn't positive, so there was uh, not much to happen. But you could have been positive. It, oh, if if obviously if I would have um, tested positive, then that's a different ball game. What was the yeah. lag time for when uh, you last started? You you were last working, and then uh, you you uh, tested negative. Sorry, say that again, sorry, Tim. When, when, when you were last at work, when you got yep. the call, and when your yep. tests came back negative, because obviously you isolated immediately after your daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so like I said, I, I got tested on a Monday, you know, late morning, and I think I got my result, you know, Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning. I can't honestly remember now. But I was, I was not at work. I had to stay at home until I got that result. But even then, I had to remain in isolation for 14 days, yeah. Uh, and uh, your daughter's uh, close contacts. Uh, uh, how was? Yeah, that? they all they all they all had to get tested, and there was um, there was a few of those that um, there was um, another couple of chicks. Um, they were um, they tested positive as well. Um, yeah. Uh, so it sounded like, at least uh, in your uh, in your family and in your area, uh, the the contact traces the. Uh, uh, the quarantine checkups were thorough. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and you know, I've got no issues with that. I mean, if they would have done, you know, done the right thing in the first place, we wouldn't be where we are today. You know, it's I'm all for if if you got something, you need to be, you know, locked up, not locked away in your house, but you need to be, you know, just isolating in your house, away from everyone. It's, it's pretty simple, isn't it, Julie? Just yeah. like if you got a flu, if you got a flu. You know, you shouldn't be walking out coughing and sneezing all over everyone. You should just be in your own house. It's uh, common sense, yeah. common decency. Now, it, the Australian Defence Force, they were finally uh, helping uh, with the, the, the isolation checks yeah. at that, at that yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, we remember that in early July, uh, the Andrews government put in an order for Defence Force personnel, then they withdrew it. They were um, the next day, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, then yeah, finally. Next day, yeah. So you just wonder, is it, you know, hubris that uh, Dan the man thinks he can do it all himself? Oh, I, I just think he's, um, you know, he thinks he's a warrior. He, you know, it's all about that. It's all about Dan. That is the problem. It's all about him. Mm. It's all about him. It really is. Yeah, but we heard uh, in the the lead up to uh, the the ADF assisting with the the checkups how they uh, uh, Victoria Police and and DHS they weren't keeping up with uh, checking to people that people were self isolating and or well, there were anecdotal reports that uh, so, some people uh, you know weren't at home uh, when they were supposed to be isolating and apparently one of them was that had gone to, to work while uh, positive. And yeah. that's when we we're getting three, 400, uh, up to, to 600 cases per day. I think it was around about when stage four had just started and we are just sort of It like, just come in, just that's, it really ramped up then. Yeah, yeah and we was, just sort of yeah. thought at the time, we're never gonna get out of this. That they're mm. like, uh, it, was ba- it was basically like a roller coaster at the time. 300 uh, today, that doesn't seem too bad. 600 the next day. Uh, 707 the yeah, following yeah. day, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was jumping up, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, jumped up. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, e- even now, was... it's still jumping around. But there was more, no, there, there's lots more, you know, there was 30,000 tests being done a day. You know, yeah. I think there's, um, yeah, I think mm. there was 11,000 on Sunday yeah. or Monday. And the, the media uh, at that time, they were still egging down to, to go into stage four. And as soon as we got into stage four, they were hypothesizing, oh, what could stage five look like? Yeah, I mean, that, but, that, but that's the media for you. They love uh, um, fanning the flames, don't they? They love uh, a big story. It's, yeah, it's, uh, and of course, uh, they're uh, always going to be deemed essential workers. Uh, fake news is always uh, essential. Or should I say... Big business. Uh, gov- big gov- business. Gov- uh, uh, parroting government propaganda is always essential yeah, business. Yeah, pushing it, absolutely. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah so, yeah, as you it. said, your, your daughter hardly had... Uh, uh, uh any symptoms uh mm. so i assume she's made a full recovery now fine yeah, yeah. she's absolutely fine yeah. yeah 
and she hasn't, uh, as uh, Dan Andrews has, has, warned, has warned young people, as far as you know, none of her uh, internal organs have been crippled for life. No, 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 no. Thankfully, touch wood, she's um, she's all fit and well, and um, up and about, out jogging, and yeah, yeah, living life. Well, trying to live life. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as you said, it, it were it, the the mental health uh, toll was greater on her for being locked in a room for for that time. Well, it's like being in prison. Let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're in prison, you probably get more. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, leeway. Yeah. you know, you're locked in a bedroom with a toilet twenty four hours a day. You know. She did go out into the garden. What we had to do, we had to sort of go to another part of the house so she could walk through in her mask and gloves and go out into the garden, get some uh, get some sunshine and then disappear mm. back into her bedroom. But um, that was as good as it got for all thing. Uh, has uh, COVID being in your household, has it changed uh, your uh, views on the, on the virus and the associated lockdowns at all? Um. Yeah, I think it has. I think, um, yeah, it definitely has. In the early days, not right in the early days, but it's like, you know, May time, you, you look at what's going on, you know, and you, you fall into the trap and thinking it's, you know, it's the worst thing to ever, you know, happen to us. It's, you know, it's up there with Ebola because that's the way it's being portrayed. Well, yeah, the reality is when it is in your household and you know people have had it and you've, you've spoken to people, it's, you know, you, you know it's, you know it can do a bit of damage to some people, uh, you know, namely elderly or people who are, you know, compromised. You know, you know, got a health is compromised. It's you know, it can do them some damage. So um, yeah, we're we're aware of that, but I think you have got to look after those people. Uh, you, you you can't close an economy. You you you've got to, you might need to be a little bit sensible, um, but um, you can't eradicate it. You have to live with it. And most importantly, you've got to, you've got to live your life. You're a long time dead. You've got to live your life. Yeah. I listened to an old woman phone up the other day and she was, um, again on Neil Mitchell. She, she was about, I think she said she was 74. She said she's been locked up since, um, March time. Mm. And she said, you know, these are my final years. She mm. said, and you know, I want to go out and about and see my friends and go, you know, play lawn bowls and, and mm. I'm locked up. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. she said, this isn't living. You're killing me. And, and, and that's exactly right. It's killing people. Yeah. And it's interesting that uh, many of the arrests at these anti-lockdown protests have been uh, senior citizens uh, uh, who <laughs> are told that uh, this virus is going to be a death sentence uh, uh, to you, yet uh, yeah. they're getting, yeah. they're the ones getting handcuffed uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the police. Oh, I, listen, I've no, I've never, I've never seen anything like this in all my life. Just, just people going around. They're, even their social, they social, socially distanced. They got masks on. They're going for a walk or whatever, and they get arrested. And and it's not just, um, it's heavy handed as well. You, you know, like the old two two ladies sat on a bench, and the police stole, you know, snatched the phone off of her, and they, you know, they handcuffed these old ladies. And you think, you for real? It's mm. it's actually bullshit. It yeah. really is bullshit. I've never witnessed anything like that. That 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 is what happens in China, in Hong Kong. That's what happens. And we were in Victoria. Oh, my yeah, goodness. I mean, who are we, we really to to, to criticise China on human rights? Well, now? well, that's exactly right. You can't. You cannot. We're we're no different from China. We're really not. Mm. I mean, the abuse mm. that people are suffering at the moment is actually yeah. hideous. And Pregnant I, women. Oh. Mm. Well, we'll talk about uh, Zoe uh, Buehler, who was the, uh, the, the pregnant uh, Ballarat mother who was arrested, charged and handcuffed uh, for incitement for wanting to, to organise an anti-lockdown protest uh, in her uh, hometown of uh, Ballarat uh, on that uh, September 5 uh, Free Freedom Day. And there was a number of other... Uh, prominent anti-lockdown activists who were charged with incitement uh, that week, uh, such as uh, Fenos uh, Panias, uh, Anthony Kalouf, and uh, James uh, Bartolo. And there's been a lot of legal commentary about uh, whether this uh, incitement to commit a crime can be applied to uh, emergency uh, health uh, directives given well inci incitement normally is people are charged with in, in inciting others to commit like a serious offense like you know murder yeah. or terrorism that's exactly right mm. <laughs> get, yeah. get, go, going out going out in a mask and socially distance is that is that really yeah, is that all under the same thing 
Uh, but pro uh, probably what uh, disturbed uh, most people was that she was handcuffed uh, by the, the, the police officers there. I don't know what sort of uh, threat uh, she was uh, posing. She, she obviously looked like she was quite uh, confused and, and distressed. So I don't know where you would then escalate things and, and, hang, and handcuff her. That, uh, that uh, yeah. I think that was all about um, uh, trying to portray to other people. I, I think that's what it was. It, yeah, they were just coming down. You know, look. You know, if you if you step out of line, we're going to arrest you. And this is what's going to happen to you. Mm. Listen, I got arrested at the uh, Milo event. Obviously, we know about that. Uh, oh, well, you, uh, you you got one of those. What is it? Poli well, police. Police. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, were you handcuffed? No, they came around my house and knocked on the door, and they were very friendly. And uh, uh, could, uh, could we come in? They had, they had a warrant anyway, so, but they they asked, and uh, they come in, and um, and then yeah, I, I actually <laughs> funny thing was, um, I went to the police station. I actually um, I drove my own car down there. They said just follow us down. I actually drove in my own car to the police station to to to, to answer questions. This chick has just posted something on Facebook. And she she gets uh, um, handcuffed and taken away. It, that, uh, yeah, yeah, madness. Yeah, and uh, even uh, Neil Erickson, when uh, the the police uh, uh, charged him uh, uh, over the the Milo uh, brawl, they, they they didn't handcuff him. He uh, retold the story uh, on uh, on one of his Senator Slayer live streams. He was just having a smoke yeah. out the front in the morning and the police yeah. rocked up and said, hey, Erickson, you know, we've got warrant here and we need to to, to look at that. Uh, and yeah. it, the, uh, most of the, the execution of these uh, warrants and uh, questioning, they're, they're not like the movies. No, definitely not. And it's it seemed to be that... Uh, Zoe Buller's uh, arrest and handcuffing, it was was more like the movies. Mm. Oh, it, I think it was all about the shock and awe, mm. and I think um, they, they just come down heavy, and it, it's, it, like you say, it's um, maybe they're taking a leaf out of the uh, communist uh, regime. They really are, aren't they? Mm. It's, uh, yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. Of course, uh, Dan Andrews, he is, uh, a, a refused to be uh, drawn about... Uh, uh, to, to comment on the conduct of Victoria Police, he said, I'm not in the business of uh, uh, criticising Victoria Police. Uh, he, he's good at deflecting. He's good at deflecting uh, yeah. uh, questions. He, he uh, uh, Was it last night? night before? Um, as a Channel 7 report from Sydney, uh, uh, Sydney Hitchcock. Did you, did, he asked the question three times. Did, did, did you see that? Uh, I've heard about it. You can return yeah, to the audience. and he, he asked him, and, and Andrews was just there deflecting it, and he said, answer the question, I've asked you three times, you know. Mm. Yeah, mm. unbelievable. But, yeah. Uh, Andrews doesn't like to ask any uh, hard questions, only the easy ones. Mm. Or he deflects that saying, oh, it's not my place. Well, he or... deflects it, yeah, that's right. He's definitely a Teflon down, he, and he likes to deflect it. Puts on to somebody else. Uh, we've got another question here on Entropy from Bieber Anti-Bullying. Uh, is it anti-Semitic to blame Martin McCullough for hiring the dodgy security uh, and causing the outbreak because he's Jewish and Jews have been accused many times throughout history of spreading plague? Um, well, Martin McCullough today, I think he he said that it wasn't his decision to, to hire the security guards. <laughs> I don't uh, think anyone's owned up to that, have they? No one knows who, who, who put them in, in charge, do they? Yeah, Dan appears uh, on Friday afternoon at 2.15 p.m. Uh, before the, uh, the judicial inquiry. Uh, Jenny McCarkos, uh, she is appearing tomorrow. Uh, both Martin Bakula's uh, department, Department of Jobs, and Jenny McCarkos' department, Department of Health and Human Services, they're all blaming each other, saying, well, it was their job to, 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 to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always somebody else's fault, wouldn't it? Yeah, mm. I, I can see this ending with no outcome. It, this will just get yeah, covered up. I'm pretty confident by that. Well, as as we we we've known, when, 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 you, when you got police commissioners and everyone who's been interrogated and they've all got amnesia, mm. uh, it's, how, how can you prove it in the end? Yeah, I, I remember there was a a, a chaser uh, sketch many years back uh, about. 
uh, Royal Commissions, how you, uh, they, they had this product, the, the me Mega Memory Loss Kit, that yeah. you'd, you'd take it before, uh, you, you testified before a Royal Commission on an inquiry, and then yeah. you could just say, I can't recall, uh, not to my knowledge, not in my presence. I think the record for uh, the amount of I can't recalls is, uh, well, former uh, Liberal Senator and former uh, John Howard Chief of Staff, uh, Arthur Zinedinus, he said, I can't recall 80 times because he was being asked, <laughs> asked about uh, donations from Australian water holdings to the New South Wales no. Liberal Party. He was the chairman of Australian water holdings. And he was also the New South Wales Treasurer of the Liberal Party. So the company that he's a chairman of is giving donations to the New South Wales Liberal Party. He's in both positions, but he said, I can't recall 80 times. Yeah, that's uh, quite remarkable. But yeah. uh, to get a jail card, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, ICAC didn't find a, 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 a didn't uh, give a finding of corruption against him. So he was. That's what to, I mean. Is to get out is to get out a jail card now. We're using now. Return, now, return, now return, return to the ministry. I use that a lot in like just my everyday language now. If someone's asked me about something, I just like say no, I can't recall, not to my knowledge. Like I'm using it in a sarcastic <laughs> way. I, I actually might start using that one myself. Actually, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you, you don't want to play it as a drinking game when you're watching uh, Dan's testimony on Friday. <laughs> Probably end up launching the uh, a beer bottle at the TV. Mm. Oh well, uh, that's when you've got the, uh, the the other Dan who actually does deliver Dan Murphy. I'm sure oh, you've yeah. that memes. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I wonder yeah. if uh, Dan Murphy's might actually change their name after this uh, <laughs> Victoria. Yeah, yeah. I t I tell you what, now there's somebody who's made some money in uh, in lockdown. Yeah, Dan Murphy's bottle mm. shops. Yeah, they, they've uh, 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 delivered uh, hundreds of, of daily cases. Yeah, <laughs> quite literally. Yeah. <laughs> so, as I said in my introduction, uh, Dan Andrews has said, "Oh, I might you know ease some extra uh, restrictions uh, on Sunday, but don't know yet because we've got ongoing meetings and blah blah blah." Um, uh, do you have? <laughs> is it worth making any predictions? Will Will we get to have our haircut or? Well, well, I I, I do know for a fact um, when he did that deal with the Animal Justice Party, they they made him. Uh, and he released a statement last week that dogs can get uh, groomed as from the 28th. So, uh, so you can't get your haircut. I can't get my haircut, but uh, you can take your dog to go and get groomed. How's that? Yeah. Well, the dogs don't get the coronavirus, contrary to what some early <laughs> uh, fake news uh, reports. Uh, they did say, say that, didn't they? I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They did say that. There's yeah. no outside chance your dog could get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the the the, the latest a. Uh, uh, story about how the coronavirus could be transmitted through farts uh, silent but deadly oh yeah <laughs> who comes up with that mm. yeah comes up with that yeah jesus christ yeah uh, uh, now we've talked predictions to... for his uh, so what predictions have you got then tim for the 28th um well is it is it is it is it too it, 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 would you say is it too preemptive or too outlandish to say that he'll lift the curfew on the five kilometre radius? Uh, I, I, I don't think he'll do that. No, I don't think he'll do that. Even though he his uh, curfew is being challenged before the courts? Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I reckon he'll cave in and, and open that just before. Because what, what date does that go to actually go to court, you know? Um, next week. It is next week. Well, oh, listen, it could do. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's probably a fair call, actually. Mm. He, he could let, lift um, uh, a curfew. And I reckon he could do that, you know, because if everything's closed down anyway, well, you know, what's people going to do at night time? It, it's yeah. not really... And it'll be yeah. two days after his uh, appearance at the, the judicial inquiry. Yeah, yeah. He, he's not going to give much away, is he? Let's be honest. But, yeah, there's, there's an outside chance he could uh, lift the night curfew, you know? Mm. So, you know, we know that's a crock of shit and nothing, mm. it's doesn't come out at night time, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, in the UK, uh, apparently the virus comes out, comes out after 10pm because that's the, the new curfew for the hospitality industry. Yeah, apparently, closes, they close, they close at 10 o'clock. Yeah, apparently if you have a, a cold beer at a pub at 10.01pm uh, in the UK, could get You're coronavirus doomed. from it. You are doomed. Mm. 
Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. but no um, question what's going to happen there? Yeah, we've been talking about uh, the uh, the other uh, unaccounted uh, uh, deaths uh, from the the lockdown, which aren't included in Dan Andrews' daily press briefing. Uh, briefing. We've had quite a a tragic a uh, outcome, which can be attributed to uh, the curfew and. Uh, social distancing to, to some degree, even though we don't know all the facts. And this is the, uh, the I'll bring it up here uh, in a moment. Uh, this is just broken uh, late, this, late this afternoon. Uh, this is the... Oh. Hang on, I'll get it, I'll get it in a moment. Uh, you, you 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 say something while I'm bringing this up. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, I think I know what you're talking about, and yeah. I, I think that can. Um, yeah. That, that that's really sad. Yeah. I, I won't mention anything until you bring it up. I can't actually see the screen itself. I can see your picture. I should be able to see it now. Yeah. This is the uh, uh, the uh, the death of this uh, 14 year old autistic boy, uh, William Wall, who went uh, missing. Yesterday, after going for a walk, his body was found this afternoon, and uh, police uh, launched an air and ground uh, search with uh, 100 police, uh, but uh, uh, they declined the help of uh, dozens of, of local residents. They claimed that they had enough resources for the job and asked volunteers to spread the word on social media instead, and there was a lot of talk that people... Uh, People who would normally uh, go out to uh, go out to, to find him were worried about breaching curfew, getting the sixteen hundred and fifty two dollar five. Even though where where he was missing, Warburton in the Yarra Rangers had no uh, coronavirus uh, cases, and there has all the all the the, the recent uh, recent cases of autistic children going missing while walking. They've been found. And it just so happens that when Melbourne is still under stage, basic stage four lockdown, uh, because people aren't free to do their own searching, uh, yeah. this boy is now dead. It's just heartbreaking. Yeah. Oh, listen, it is sad. And I mean, like the other autistic lad, I think it was probably, was it the end of last year? He went missing and he was found after, I think, 48 hours. But yeah. there was hundreds and hundreds of people out there looking for him. Mm. Um, and, and this wasn't allowed this time. I mean... Hundreds of people on the ground foraging through, you know, uh, you know, acres and acres. That that could have made all the difference. I mean, far out, you know, make some exceptions for goodness sake. I mean, this mm. this was a poor lad, you know, and mm. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, and Dan it's, Andrews it's was asked really was asked uh, today uh, about it, and he said, "Oh, uh, Victoria Police can answer those questions. I wonder what he'll say." It could, tomorrow of course yeah he, yeah he yeah he, he, he would deflect it mm. he'd say, oh, and no, you wonder sorry, if something sorry, like this is going to be service. The, service. yeah you wonder if something like this is going to be the trigger point that uh because the search was hindered because of the lockdown whether this is going to be the trigger point for him to lift the curfew and uh some other uh measures oh i don't think so uh, he, he's he, he doesn't think like that and he doesn't yeah think i know like that. Yeah, so I don't think so at all. Yeah. Um, I mean, his initial reaction to that uh, uh, mentally ill man getting stomped on by uh, Victoria Police was uh, none of this would be necessary if people didn't protest, even though it had nothing to do with the protest. Yeah, he, no, he, had a, he, 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 he had an episode. He had a mental health issue. And um, a, a, apparently that was um, um, the first issue like that he'd had in a, in a long, 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 long time. I mean, was it coincidental that we've been in a hard lockdown? Yeah. Did that, did that tip him over the edge? Mm. You know, it's, yeah. yeah and uh, people are reporting from emergency wards now that uh, there's more people presenting with mental health issues, but those with the sniffles get still get priority treatment. What, 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 what we are going to be seeing in um, months and, you know, time, months to come is, you know, obviously elective surgery, but people going for tests like cancer tests, mammograms, prostate cancer, et cetera, et cetera. They're not going, they're not getting checked up. Mouth cancer is not getting 
we're going to see an epidemic of cancers. Yeah. In like even months, you know? uh, you, it, it, under stage four, you can't go to the dentist for a routine checkup unless it's for an emergency, like you've got a tooth it's chip or madness. something. Yeah, I've had my dentist cancelled twice, you know. It, it's seriously, come on. Mm. It's, it's Dentists the, wear masks, they wear gloves. Yeah. E e even though there's been no case anywhere that I know of of coronavirus uh, outbreak at a dental practice. Yeah, and, and it won't happen. They're, they're the most hygienic places you can possibly go, I think, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, because the mouth is, well, dentists know more than anyone that mouth is the most they have, they, have, they have that much um, PPE on, they have, they have a mask, they yeah. have a visor on, they have glasses, they have gloves, they have bloody disinfectants, everything yeah. swapped, it's, you know, mm. hello. Because yeah, the mouth is the most filthiest part of your body. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's what I, you know, garb up and everything. It's, it's a joke. Mm. Well, let's turn to uh, your uh, uh, your place of birth, uh, the UK, which yeah. seems to be following the the Melbourne model. Uh, as well, a lot of a lot of people when they uh, around the world when they heard of of Melbourne's uh, strict uh, lockdown, they predicted that it'd be a model for the the rest of the world, and it looks like. Oh, uh, Boris Johnson, he's completely captive to the UK technocrats. I mean, if you think mm. we're in any state, the UK uh, is worse. Oh, it's, that's the thing with the UK. It's been splintered and bitter for a long, long time. Mm. Uh, so they, he announced these in the House of Commons on, on Tuesday and also did an address to the nation uh, later that evening. Uh, so the, the new uh, restrictions are uh, office workers uh, to work from home again where possible. Uh, although those in key public services and in professions where it's not possible, such as construction retail, should continue to attend their workplace as well. Even in between uh, Victoria's first and second wave, uh, the, the work from home where possible, that was always in place. I know uh, Stefanos, uh, Australian Meditations, uh, he's worked from home since the beginning of the, 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 the pandemic. He'll be up on, on Senator Slayer's, uh, he's doing another stream tonight, uh, just, in a, just in a couple of minutes. He is. Uh, from Thursday, all pubs, bars, restaurants must offer table service only, which basically means, well, this is what we had uh, when the pubs mm. were open in Victoria, mm. had to be seated down. The, the wait, waiters and waitresses came to you to collect your order and you paid by uh, a, a contactless tap and go and they brought the stuff to you. They all must close at 10 p.m. Uh, but delivery services can re remain open. Does that mean you can get, was it Uber Eats at 11 p.m.? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same as what we're getting here where we can get our food delivered and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. But but listen, in the UK, they did, they did have a total closure, that, you know, in the first wave where... You know, pubs and bars and everything yeah. did, did close down. Uh, uh, but we, it seems like a distant memory now uh, uh, to uh, compared to what our Victoria Police is doing. But the UK Police, they were very overzealous in what is it, patrolling apartment complexes to see people social distancing, uh, telling people off, uh, laying in their front garden on their private properties. Well, I know um, um, in my hometown, uh, it was only two weeks ago, actually, a, a young lad, you know, 17, 18, he had a party when his parents were away. And I think you were allowed a gathering of about 30 people. I think, I'm, I'm not sure the exact numbers. It's been re anyway, well, reduced to... It, what, yeah. it was about 30, I think. This is like two or three weeks ago. Mm. And um, he had a load of gate crashes there. The neighbours bobbed him in. He actually got a £10,000 fine. It was the highest fine that anyone's ever had in the UK for, for wow. having a, a house party. Ten thousand pounds, which, which is, is around twenty thousand Australian. Well, dollars. no, not quite. It's probably about sixteen thousand dollars, I think. Yeah, mm. but uh, it's a huge fine. Yeah, <laughs> they they operate the UK on a, a basically a sliding a scale. That first first offence, well, it used to be a hundred pound fine. Now it's been up to two hundred. Uh, they have the same fine for not wearing a face covering and uh, breaching lockdown orders, where in Victoria, uh, the fine for breaching lockdown is 1,652, but the fine for not wearing a face covering uh, is 200. So, but in the UK, they've just got the universal fine. Had he gotten a fine before that lad that you knew? 
Yeah, listen, I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. I, I don't know. They, I think, again, they just probably went to try to set, set, set a precedent there. Mm. What, what, what is interesting, you, you just say, about obviously over here, you know, you can get a $1,602 fine, whatever. How much mm. do you get fined for talking on the phone in the car? Uh, it's about 300 or 400 or something. Yeah, but if you don't have a mask on, you can get fined 1600 Yeah, amazing. Uh, so, COVID secure guidelines will become a legal obligation for retail, leisure, and tourism firms. Those who do not comply run the risk of fines of up to ten thousand pounds or closure. Or what is it we call them here? COVID safe plans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the new buzzwords of twenty twenty: COVID safe. Well, that's like furlough. Uh, you know, I never even understood what a furlough was until uh, you know, furlough payment. Yeah, mm. which is basically a job keeper. Yeah, which uh, now there, there's going to be, that's the, the next thing that the, the UK Parliament uh, has to decide, the extension of the furlough uh, scheme. The, the Morrison government here, they've been adamant that uh, JobKeeper will end in March next year and it will, con it will be cut again uh, in January, which I think is basically, it's an ultimatum to the states. Uh, you're not paying for the lockdowns you're imposing. Uh, we're not yeah. going to subsidise your closures uh, beyond March next year, which I think is the appropriate. Yeah. yeah. So I missed that, Tim. You broke up a bit there. Oh. oh, I'll move on to the next one. From Monday, a maximum of 15 people will be allowed to attend weddings, uh, but uh, 30 can still go to a funeral. Well, that's a bit more than uh, Victoria yeah. at the moment, where it's actually yeah. illegal uh, to get married. Yeah. Mm. That's the marriage equality we have in Melbourne at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm. Uh, the rule of six has been extended to, to indoor sports, such as five-a-side football games. Does that mean fi like, uh, five, like, five... Yeah, five-a-side. So, so you play indoor soccer, it's, it's called five-a-side, so it's ten of your playing sort of thing, yeah. Uh, the phased reopening of stadiums for sporting events from 1st of October has been scrapped. So, well, if the Premier League lasts... Premier League behind season, closed doors again. Uh, because yeah. well, it's, it's not surprising that uh, uh, cases are now rising in the UK as it comes out of summer. And we all know that... Uh, well, it seems to be, doesn't it? It, it, it's, um, yeah, it doesn't like the heat, does it? Yeah. Apparently. And it sort of like makes sense. If you look at trends around the world, it, it, that, that, that seems to be, you know, what happens. Mm. Yeah. And uh, speaking to MPs, the Prime Minister warned the new measures could last six months. And he's also warned that uh, if the... Because it's around about 4,000 daily case numbers at the moment, uh, UK-wide, yeah. he could go further uh, in... Because uh, this is a... This applies... Uh, nationwide but uh local full lockdowns are going to be decided at the local level nicholas Sturgeon well they, they, they've actually been they've always happened they've been happening for a long time i think newcastle's been in in a lockdown at different times and, and leicester has been yeah uh, so as uh, bolton and, uh, uh, bolton Lanc um lancashire yeah, it's, it's quite funny some of the places you, we just listed there they they, they they got a um large populations of um ethnics so <laughs> I don't know if it's the uh, language barrier. Are they not following uh, uh, rules or, or what it is? Well, I've noticed the, the same thing uh, in Melbourne, that uh, the yeah. hotspot areas, the areas that were locked down. Absolutely. Were the, yeah. with the, with the more, uh, diverse uh, ones. What is, is, it, is, it, yeah. is it because there's a language barrier or is it because they just don't give a shit? Or, they, or, uh, or the police don't want to be accused of being racist by enforcing... Well. Well, they certainly let them get away with lots of things. I remember, um, and you probably remember this, it was, again, it was, um, you know, June, July time. Uh, they had um, a big Islamic wedding in Broad Meadows, uh, and that was when you were only allowed, I think, 10 people or whatever, but they had like 150 people there. Do you remember that? Yes, I do remember that. Yeah, and not one person got fined or, 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 or anything. Yeah, no, neither, or, neither did any of those uh, five households in that uh, Af Af Afghani Afghan. cluster no, no, in the exactly, city of Casey, exactly. and uh, yeah, uh, Brett, Brett Sutton, the chief health officer, said sorry uh, for uh, well naming uh, the the ethnicity of the households. 
He, he didn't just apologise. He grovelled. He, you know, he yeah. apologised several times. Yeah. My God. Yeah, you know, apologised in their language. Yeah, and, and he did do it in their language, yeah, yeah. And then, mm. and he told everyone how, how good he it, it was and how good he was when he went to Afghanistan. And, mm. Oh, God, what a load of nonsense. Uh, different but, walls for different people. Mm. Uh, I wrote an article on the Unshackled a week and a half ago now, uh, noticing that the UK was following the, the Melbourne model. And, yeah, it looks like their Christmas will be cancelled. Well, it'll be illegal to celebrate christmas with uh, family members not in your household yeah i mean how sad is that i mean that and that is a time when people really will neck themselves mm. especially people that are on their own mm. but uh, the thing is even though uh, the the cases are rising the the, the deaths are, are not at the the levels at least at the moment that they were back in uh. march yeah, I, I don't know if there's a, a lag time. I know there's obviously a lag time, but how long that lag time is, or is it because, um, you know, the elderly or the most vulnerable have all been killed off now? I don't know. <laughs> well, there's, we've still got that, that lag of uh, those in aged care dying here in Victoria, which is still yeah. uh, There's always tragic. about two or three weeks, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Oh, it is tragic. It's terrible. Mm. Uh, though we've heard some uh, some of the stories of survival uh, now because coronavirus is not a death sentence for uh, people uh, uh, over the age of 70. There's a 95-year-old who survived uh, in Melbourne. And is that, 100 there's, a hundred, there's, a, there's a chap, there's a hundred, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it, yeah. yeah. So which is, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> you, sort of, you, you sort of uh, think that, wow, that's, they 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 must feel like yeah I'm going to live another ten years after this. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. What 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 is interesting is that um, you know they they list and I would love to know accurately the people that do die. Most of them don't actually die of COVID; they die with COVID. Yes, you know? exactly. It's um and and I, and I find that quite staggering. It's what what you know I don't I don't understand why they list it like that. Be honest and upfront. It's it's you know that, that's bullshit. But it's obviously the the UK and the yeah the the technocrats the uh, the government. But, medical... but it's a worldwide thing. It's yeah. it's a worldwide thing. Everyone lists it the same way, and I don't understand why. You know, people with terminal lung cancer, but they died of COVID. Hello, it's mm. yeah remarkable. But it's clearly not about flattening the curve anymore. It's about either extreme suppression or elimination because Boris Johnson is making these decisions based on testing numbers. Oh, sorry, mm. to add positive test uh, results. Yeah. Mm. But as, as we know, most people, they test positive and they just, you know, two weeks later, they're back to, back to doing what they do. It's, mm. yeah. And it's as I mentioned, uh, 20,000 Victorians have tested positive for coronavirus, but that's just the ones who have had the test. Mm. I mean, we don't know. Well, uh, Brett Sutton admitted that asymptomatic people uh, with the uh, who uh, undergo a coronavirus test may not test positive. No, that's that's exactly right. Yeah, and mm. and 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 how many people? Yeah, like you say, that you know, so many people out there probably haven't have had it and they haven't got tested. and They've just carried on as normal. Mm. You know, like you do if you get a cold. You know, you, most people just carry on as per normal. It's it's uh, yeah. Well, I think we're in a much better position now to have a, you know, as we're told, COVID normal Christmas than uh, 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 your native uh, Britain. Uh, oh, yeah, that's going to be a sad time. Mm. Uh, but uh, a lot of people are speculating when, because they're, uh, seven out of the eight Australian tax and territories have agreed to uh, tear down their borders uh, by Christmas. Uh, we're all wondering whether there'll be the, the mass uh, Vic, uh, Vic exit. Exodus. Yeah. Because do you really yeah. want to, if there's no vaccine, do you really want to risk another winter in Melbourne? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good point as well. Did, um, did um, WA, did they actually sign up to that as well? Or was no, they been, didn't. Uh, they, yeah. Mark McGowan is going to, uh, it looks like he'll keep the hard border up until March 2021, which it just so happens to be when the next WA state election is. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 absolutely staggering, isn't it? Mm. Uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk, uh, after 
uh, her heartless and cruel uh, board of decisions. She's uh, uh, she's created a a a, a ten LGA uh, bubble with Northern New South Wales now. So I see if, that. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, which is common sense. Yeah, of course it is. Mm. And uh, South um, Australia has opened its border now with uh, New South Wales as well. Yeah. I see, I see New South Wales, they've, they've opened their, well, I think, aren't they opening their borders with a lot of, um, you know, country Victoria now, uh, um, you know, joining over the water. They, they, I think they've got a free movement, haven't they, or they're bringing it in? To? From Victoria into New South Wales, you know, all the border towns, I think they're, they're uh, relaxing that somewhat. Well, Glasgow Jekyllian has indicated, given well, a regional Victoria, they're down to less than two a on their 14 day rolling average that yeah she wants to to open the border as soon as possible so if you're in regional yeah, victoria good. um you'll be able to uh soon cross cross into new south wales uh without uh, uh neil's mate uh jared cb he said even after his uh, uh initial uh, arrest for crossing into a uh, uh, Wodonga's uh, sister city, Albury in, in New South Wales, he he, he still uh, uh, gets into to trouble uh, at the at the border checkpoint. Uh, he was he's on Neil's show uh, right now. He was on last night. He is uh, he? I uh, might jump on there after you, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there there was grief apparently because one of his son's border permits had expired. Oh really? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. They they did expire, didn't they? So you got to print off a new one. Yeah, I had to get a new one the other day, actually. Yeah. Mm. And well, because uh, we've got their permitted worker scheme that expires again on September September twenty seventh. So uh, Dan Andrews is going to announce on the Sunday whether the permitted worker scheme will continue the next day and whether we'll have to print off new paperwork. Yeah, I should imagine we'd have to. Mm. You have to, because otherwise anyone can say they're going to work. Anyone can say they're a tradesperson or an essential Well, they could during the first lockdown. It was only yeah. during the stage oh, yeah. four that he introduced their uh, permitted yeah. worker scheme. He said the reason, also, oh, there's no anxiety when you're pulled over. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Now, it's going to be interesting. I can't really see too much. I don't think he's going to give uh, give us too much, that's for sure. He's, he, he, he's going to cling on to that, um, that power and that stick. Mm. And that carrot. Well, uh, we all fingers crossed that uh, eventually uh, his demise is sooner rather than later. Do you um, do you reckon he's going to uh, see in another term, or is he get, what's he going to do? Is he is he going to is he going to fall on his sword? Is he going to get sacked? Well, he might do the, he... the thing, you know, spend more time with my family who I haven't seen because of. Yeah, yeah. listen, I think I can see that's going to happen. Mm. I, I reckon that could happen. Because that's yeah, always the, uh, the the official non-controversy reason for politicians. Uh, it's, 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 an e it's an easy option, isn't it? Let's be honest. Hmm. It's an easy option, yeah. I did hear someone say, and I don't know whether it's true or not, that his wife and children are up in uh, Queensland. I've heard that rumour. Uh, yeah, that was a well. rumour going around. Uh, given uh, a lot of the... Uh, threats uh, that have been circulating around uh, against him. Uh, oh. Obviously, the the vitriol on on, on social media uh, is uh, intensifying uh, against him. So yeah, yeah. you'd have to, uh, well, you'd think that that would have an impact uh, on him as well. I mean, even the Washington Post that uh, 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 Trump deranged. A uh, U.S. newspaper is calling him Dictator yeah. Dan. Well, it's funny, you know, I was, I was speaking to the people in the U.K., you know, friends and everything, and, uh, yeah, they're very aware of uh, Dictator Dan. He's, he's obviously got a reputation around the world. Yeah, I mean, surely that would get to him. Do you really want to be <laughs> known as the, the only dictator in the Western world? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think he embraces it. I think he loves it. It's, mm. it's just he, he just loves that totalitarian power. You know, that's, yeah, that's the sort of bloke he is. I think I think he was bullied at school, so I think he's uh, he's just uh, it's his payback. Perhaps. Well, at least it's uh, as uh, as we've pointed out during the show. At least he is a uh, full totalitarian uh, tendency. But, but only to certain people, though. Only to certain people. Yeah, it's on it's on display to more people now. More people are getting 
red peeled uh, flipping, as, as I call it. They used to think yeah. that Dan wasn't too bad, but now they realize how awful he is. Because they're sitting at home with no job, not allowed to leave. They're well, well out, that's exactly right. Yeah, no, that, that's that's exactly right. People people are waking up only because they've had to. It's actually affected them now. It never, he never used to affect them before. You know, yeah, and they uh, yeah, choose yeah. to look away. But no. now, now they're so like their business potentially is you know in turmoil and their mental health. Is, mm. You know, and they can see their children aren't getting good educations and mm. so on and so forth. It's yeah, of course they're going to turn, mm. aren't they? Any normal white minded person would think that. Mm. Uh, this time last year, uh, you're free to leave your home for any reason, even at four in the morning, to go down to the servo to get some milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's right. Now yeah. that's highly illegal. Highly illegal. I mean, geez, going down, going out to get some milk at, uh, at midnight. It's you know, that's up there with drug running, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, you well, it's probably, yeah, uh, it's probably you probably get fined less for that for drug running than you do bloody going out to get a bottle of milk at midnight. Because mm. it's Sixteen hundred dollar fine for for buying some milk, and you you mm. could be uh, a drug dealer and get nothing. I, I still see uh, because occasionally Victoria Police on their Facebook page post uh, non COVID enforcement uh, notices, including uh, well, they're uh, criminals. They're 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 still not uh, obeying the, the the stay at home curfew. They're still breaking into to houses, uh, carjacking. Uh, and uh, they, the Victoria Police, they're starting putting out put, putting out uh, composite images of suspects um, oh, yeah. with the with the masks on. So <laughs> this is a side effect of the the face covering mandate. It's now. Well, it wasn't that long ago. I remember, you know, three years ago, you would get um, you get you, you weren't allowed to wear a mask. There was a fine, especially if you was at demonstration that, that you and you, you had a mask on. Yeah, you, designated you area. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Our times have changed, haven't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah, mad. All right. Uh, thanks for uh, joining me tonight, Gary. And uh, nah, Pleasure, Tim. Nice to catch up from you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll catch with you. up with you again in the flesh uh, soon and yeah. uh, we're, we're going to have a beer together. Yeah, and for, yeah, telling your, your family story, I'm glad that uh, your daughter's uh, well again. And yeah, maybe by, by, by this Christmas, yeah, we can catch up in person. I might see you up in uh, Queensland somewhere. <laughs> is that is, is that where you're uh, planning an escape? Well, I was. It's funny, you know. I was. Um, we were going to Bali in June, and obviously that got canned. So I actually booked a month off of uh, work. I was going up to um, uh, uh, Cook Town, and uh, um, um, you know, right at the top there. And um, yeah, well, that obviously got canned as well in, in August. So uh, all, all the, the only place that I was planning to travel this year was uh, Bendigo for the well, it's going to oh, be yeah. the third anniversary of the the Bendigo Faithful at uh, Patriots Corner. Uh, but well, right there. it's funny that's gone quick because I was there last year. Yeah, mm. geez, that went quick. Yeah, but obviously uh, we're in the middle of uh, stage four uh, during that time, and uh, yeah. Bendigo. Was when, when, when is that? Three. What's the date of that? Uh, it was meant to be the, the weekend of August 22. God, but, yeah. that's come around quick. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. But, um, well, they're, they've been allowed now back uh, since uh, regional Victoria uh, has taken their... I, I, see, I see them on Patriot's Corner last week. Yeah, good on yeah, them. Yeah, and they've got the, the Patriot masks on, which um, yeah. I think will, will trigger uh, the I Stand With Dan people. Yeah, you're supposed to wear a face covering, but that flag triggers us. Oh, it's it's amazing what that flag does, isn't it? Yeah, it just sends people over the edge, sends mm. them in a spin, triggers them. Yeah, because you can be. Yeah, this this is the, the the unintended consequences which the left the left progressives never get. No, nah, no, nah, mm. just uh, yeah, loving your country, mate. They just don't get that, do they? Mm. Anyway, all right. All right. Well, we'll take we'll take care. Uh, stay safe. I will, Tim. I'll see you soon, mate. Yeah. And um, yeah, you take it easy. Yeah, we're not allowed to say stay free anymore because that's incitement. <laughs> uh, all good, Tim. You take care, mate. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.